Welcome back to the show. I'm David Nelson for the Traders Network. Today's show is being broadcast worldwide from downtown New York City at New York's Harvard Club. We're here at the annual leadership gala for the New York Global Leaders Dialogue. My next guest is Phil Scanlon and very much the reason we're here today. He is the host of the New York Global Leaders Dialogue. Phil Scanlon is no stranger to success. He was the Australian Council General for New York City or New York. He was also the managing director at Coca-Cola Amatil. He's the founder of the Australian American Leadership Dialogue and of course the host of today's event. Phil, welcome. Thank you so much for being with us and taking your valuable time. Thanks, David. It's been a lot of fun. We've had a, an opportunity today to, to, to interview some of the members of your council. Uh, Paul Pullman, CEO of Unilever. Dan Hesse, the former CEO of Sprint. How important is it to use global leaders like this to get the message across uh, and, and, and really put forth the mission of global leaders? Well, they're rock stars and I have nothing to prove and they're totally committed to making the world a better place. And they want to bring their own experience together and relate to younger leaders from around the world. And you know, we've got a fantastic meeting going on with Paul Polman uh, this afternoon before he, tonight. He was fun, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and Dan Hesse did it last year. He was fantastic. But the mission is based upon the premise that um, uh, you know, leadership is all about creating new space in the service of other people. It's not about us, that's, that's the key. And you'll find with all our advisory council members and all our leaders, that's the one thing they have in common. In their own walk of life, they're, they're, they're superstars, they're, they're leaders and so forth. They're also humble, they've got humility. And this whole thing began when uh, a, a group of people from the emerging world, from the established world or the older world is probably the better way of putting it, from the Anglosphere and the non-Anglosphere decided that there was something missing in New York, the global capital. Take us back to that time. Uh, the, the organization started about two years ago. Yeah, uh, yeah. And there must have been a singular moment. There must have been something, some need that you felt wasn't being met. And the reason you started this organization. Talk to us about that. Okay, well, when I was Consul General, we were the only country of 193. Australia was the only country of 193 which provided a platform for other countries to come and talk about themselves, which was quite unique. And they loved it. And then when I was leaving and going back into the enterprise world, a number of my colleagues uh, who, from different countries said, well, what are we going to do now? And the answer was, I said, well, you know, what do you want to do? And they said, look, we cannot convene the planet in New York. It's either the Anglosphere or various other elements of the world. How about we do something, pull something together that, that everybody feels comfortable attaching themselves to because we've all, the, the world is one and we all want to work together at making it a better place. And we've got different, different skills and different experiences to bring to bear. So when you meet and you talk to our advisory council members, you know, they've all got that common purpose, but they have their different verticals of endeavor where they excel. Well, let's talk about that. Our audience isn't going to have a, a better opportunity than to get, get the information from, from its leader. Talk to us about uh, Global Leaders Dialogue, what, what, what the mission is right now and moving forward. What are some of the projects you're working on today? Okay, well, when we started out, uh, we had Mutar Kent, chairman and CEO of the Coca-Cola company, good friend of mine, and he talked about how the public, private sector, and, and civil society come together to get things done. And what he was talking about that night, a couple of years ago, and, and with the young leaders, was about how to address the issue of water accessibility of water and the safety of water around the world because the Coca-Cola company has this amazing system sure. worldwide. So, you know, one, one uh, arms uh, from, from desire was the sort of way they talked about it. So that was, that was his. Now, there are other, our young leaders, you, you go and talk to our young leaders and they'll tell you about their projects in, in Africa, uh, small is beautiful. You know, the world has changed by doing small steps every day. There's no silver bullet. There are a lot of them who are in the NGO world, but you've got people in the finance world, you've got the people in the microfinance world, and you've got people in the NGO world. They all come together, and they've all got this, this commonality. They say, listen, I, I I'm excel, and I know my own vertical of endeavor. What I want to do is connect with other walks of life, people in other walks of life so I can learn from them, because no, we, none of us has all the answers. And the key here about, in leadership is about collaboration, collaborative that, leadership. That, that's really the key word, le leadership, I think. You know, for an organization like this to succeed, you're merging capital and talent, yep. getting them together. You know, 
It seems like an enormous undertaking. There must be a lot of help out there. You know, how do you do it? Well, actually, if you provide the platform, this is a platform, this is a thought leadership platform, and it brings people together. And what it does, it is a, it's a catalyst. For, it's, a, it's a force multiplier for people to go and do other, go, go out there and do things. We ourselves don't run the projects. Projects come out of our, us coming together that otherwise would never occur. That's, that's the point. In the end, this is all about young people. And I was talking about this with, with Paul and, and even Dan. You know, you're, you're taking young leaders today, you know, are the future rock stars, yeah. if, if you will. And they're getting an opportunity to intermingle with, with, with some of the rock stars of today. People have already done it and have made a difference. They're going to face a lot of challenges. You know, they're going to be dealing with national security, climate change issues, and probably things we haven't even discussed. You know, are we doing enough to get them ready to face these new challenges in the new world? Well, nobody ever does enough. You know, the world belongs to the discontented, right? So in other words, you know, if, if you're ever contented, then you should move on <clears throat> because you're not in the business of creating new space, sure. of creating a bigger world for everybody. So, but, but, but having said that, you know, coming together intergenerationally like we do, an interesting phenomenon. It's, it's, uh, it's one thing to be a mentor from a, a more chronologically advanced uh, age, you know, with the young ones, but it's another to have reverse mentorship or mutual mentorship. That's what happens. So in other words, you get a, a corporate heavyweight, a global corporate CEO <clears throat> will be sitting in the room, which is what happens. And he's talking, or she is talking to the young leaders, young women, young men, who are in their own right very successful. And they've got ideas about how to go about achieving things that the people who are in the current position of running these global enterprises may not have heard of or thought of, but they've got the message, they've got the idea from this, this younger leader. And quite often what we've seen in the last couple of years is how people who are so the, the mentors, you know, the guests of honour and all that, sit down with the younger ones and you walk out and you say, that, that two things happen. Okay, before you go there, we're going to discuss those two things, but we're, we're running out of time. We've got to go to a quick commercial break. Sit right there, don't go anywhere. Thanks for joining with us. Uh, we're going to be right back. I'm David Nelson. Welcome back to the Traders Network. If you're just joining us, we're sitting here with Phil Scanlon, founder and chairman of the New York Global Leaders Dialogue. Before we left, we were talking about mentorship, and you were going to mention two things. What were they? Yes, look, the person who's the invited keynote addressee and, you know, the more chronologically advanced that we've discussed, um, comes out and says, what a fantastic group of young leaders. I learned so much. You know, they're so vibrant. You know, they're our future. <laughs> And then you go and talk to the young leaders and they say, that guy, that woman or that, that man was fantastic because he, had to, he listened and, you know, he asked us questions. And so they, they, they both had a message for one another. They both learned from one another. And I think that's the key. You know, we, we, we've talked about what's happened over the last couple of years and, yeah. and the end of anniversary, I believe, was, was last month. What's next on your plate? Well, next on our plate is tonight. We've got two things happening. One is we're presenting the 2016 hum Global Humanitarian Award to Dr. Bin Deshwa Partak. Who's he? He has been described by Mahatma Gandhi's biological grandson as a spiritual grandson of Mahatma Gandhi. Why? He's a Brahmin from India who has brought the untouchables out from the darkness into the, into the, into the light of mainstream society. He has brought hygiene, sanitation, and in more recent years, clean water to millions of Indians. And thirdly, he has, these are, just, these are just three examples of the amazing things that he's done. He's an amazing. He's done it with technology in a sense, yeah, hasn't he? simple technology. And the other thing he's done, he's embraced the widows of deceased husbands who've been made outcasts from their families. And he's given them a new lease of life. Now, our motto, as you know, our mission is to create new space right, in the service of other people. So he embodies that. And secondly, uh, Paul Polman, as you've pointed out, is our keynote speaker, and he heads up Unilever globally, and Hindustan Unilever in India is a huge company, and they are very involved in the washing of hands and the hygiene movement in India. So there is a complementarity between what Hindustan Unilever are doing from an enterprise standpoint and what Dr. Partak has been doing for nearly 50 years. 
small is beautiful technology uh, in the NGO environment. You're working with some of the, 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 the biggest leaders in business yeah. today. And to accomplish your goals, it's going to be in capital. You know, how important is it to bring business in, you know, in out from the cold into, into an organization like this and, and utilize their talents and their capital to meet some of these goals? And I believe, you know, I would think people like Paul and Dan are just the key people out there that can, that can get that message out there. Well, your audience is, a, is the classic example of what you're saying. You know, you've got CEOs out there who, who've got the wherewithal. I have been a CEO. And, I, and my view about being a CEO is that when you've got the hat, you should wear it and you should be, and you should use and leverage the platform you've got as a CEO to do really good things for the communities that you're serving. Now that's Paul's philosophy at Unilever. It's Mutar Kent's philosophy at the Coca-Cola You just brought up a really important point, the word CEO, because this is an organization and organizations need people at the top to run the ship. You know, you need a captain. And so many organizations out there, they have a great vision, but they don't have the infrastructure. What do you bring to the table here at uh, New York Global Leaders? How do you run this ship here? Well, I'm the chairman, which is a non-executive role, and I'm, I'm blessed to be able to work with a fantastic group of advisory council colleagues. And what they all bring, what we do, we are a platform. So the idea, including to your audience, is, you know, come on board, and work as a team with us. And out of, from here, it's a force multiplier. So people come up with ideas, they get together and say, okay, let's collaborate on getting these things done. Now, what's gonna happen as a result of tonight is Dr. Patak has been sitting in with Paul Polman's discussion with the global younger leaders. And you and I know, David, that wow. one plus one equals yeah, not yeah, just yeah. five, about 17 That's in this case. Way. Yeah, yeah, because Dr. Patak is talking about he's got a technology that can enhance the lives of two and a half billion fellow human beings. How's that? That's pretty good. That's, that, that, that's, that's pretty good, you know. I've only got one last question, and, and I, it's one that I, this is one personal for me. Think back over your career. Think back. And with any organization at any point in time, you know, a point where your singular best achievement, where you can say to yourself, I made a difference. Can you share it with us? Yes, I have five daughters and two sons and a beautiful <laughs> wife. And if you ask me what my priorities in life, it's them, okay? okay? And I am very committed with, you know, women in the world. With five daughters, I think the women's movement and empowering women globally is a huge, huge opportunity for us. And that is going to be the hallmark of what the uh, New York Global Leaders Dialogue will be embarking upon in future years. Okay, we still have about 30 seconds left. I still wanna know what happens after tonight. What do you think is the next mission for New York Global Leaders? The next mission will be to look to, through the next 12 months uh, and develop a theme for next year we will be having uh, we'll be looking for the 2017 Global Humanitarian. We've got some ideas about that. It could be in the area of human crises, the aftermath of catastrophic events. It could be in the environment. It could be women in the world. <laughs> it could be Is your political dynamic a challenge for the organization? No. Uh, we, the, the one thing that I would say, and thanks for asking this question, by the way. The one thing is that it is, non, it is nonpartisan it, it is That's a rare word that we, yeah, we don't is. hear enough of today. Okay, well it is. It's, it's, it's built on the foundation of a 25 year initiative called the Australian American Leadership Dialogue, which is totally nonpartisan, has been, and what we're talking about is um, nonpartisanship and people, the only rules are this. People come together as leaders and they work collaborative, collaboratively in an environment, environment of mutual tolerance and personal courtesy. No politics, no personal animus, you know, not wanted on voyage, if that's what you are. But we want collaborators, we want leaders who are inclusive and want to look forward and want to make a contribution to our fellow human beings. That's what we're about. That's pretty refreshing. I hope, I hope we can continue with that. Phil, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today. It was really a pleasure. Thanks very much, David. Thank you. And thank you for joining. Of course, a quick thank you goes out to 1-800-PUBLIC-RELATIONS public, public for all the PR and media support. I'm David Nelson.